Wilfred Kafka sat at a table in his kitchen. It was eight in the morning. In front of him sat a plate with one bagel, one egg, and three orange slices. To the right of his plate was a half-empty cup of coffee. Wilfred stared at his food, which was going cold, and he did not feel like eating breakfast. He had woken up with the intention of starting his day with a healthy meal. Yet, there was a sudden sensation that overcame his hunger. He stood up and took the plate and coffee to the kitchen sink. Wilfred bent over and opened the cupboard door below the sink to reveal a trash can. He dumped all of his hard work into the trash. He straightened up and poured the coffee down the drain. Today was going to be just like any other day. Wilfred had a job at the Nama Towers. He was a mere accountant. Nothing more, nothing less. He did not live any form of exciting life, nor did he necessarily desire one. He preferred to keep to himself and read in his spare time. It was time for work. Wilford walked down the hall and into his bedroom. He turned to his right from the door and walked over to his dresser. He thought that wearing an orange tie with his light blue shirt would do work for today. Wilford reached for the dresser and then stopped. Something felt off for him. The air behind him grew cold, and he could feel a faint breeze across the back of his head near his ears. It was almost a whisper. That is when the door exploded. It was not as if the door had combusted and turned to ash. Wilford's front door bursted inward. The frame flung shards of wood into his foyer, and the door split in two. Following the door was a man. Wilfred, being the simple man he was, sought to investigate the noise and find the source of what sounded like a serious accident. He walked out of his room and down the hall into the foyer. Lying on the floor next to the remaining pieces of the door was a man struggling to get up, despite his possibly broken arm. Are you alright? Please, <laughs> help me get up, the man responded. Wilfred bent over and grabbed the man by his shoulder. He carried him into the kitchen and sat him down at the table. Wilford stepped back and got a look at the man. He had a shaggy beard, which was caked with dry mud. The man's face was thin from starvation. Blood ran down the man's face from an open wound on his forehead, right above his right brow. Can I get you anything? No. There's no time. Wilford did not understand. Of course there was time. There was always time. He was going to have to call in to work about this. He was not quite sure how to describe the situation to his employer, Mr. Harris. He would have to say an emergency of sorts had happened in his home, which was very unusual. It was unusual for anyone to have an emergency in his or her home. Are you hearing me? The man asked. There is no time at all. You have to listen. All right, sir. Tell me what could be so important. The man took out a gun and he set it on the table. It appeared just as rough as its owner. It was caked with mud and scratched. Wilford took a step back. While the gun seemed too damaged to actually be able to fire a bullet and successfully cause harm, he wanted to take precaution. Can you please put that away? I need this. And you're going to need it too. Why would that be? They're coming. They know that I know. What on Kornak are you possibly talking about? The man shuffled in his seat. The pain caused by his broken arm was apparent. He winced and twitched with every breath. He stared straight at Wilfred. He did not blink. We are not from Kornak. We are not Kornakians. Everything you have ever learned in primary school is wrong. Everything you learned in junior high school is wrong. Everything you ever learned in conditionary school is wrong. Sir... You are beginning to sound as if you lost your mind. I haven't. You have to think. I think all the time. The idea was preposterous, Wilfred always thought. It is impossible to be a sentient human being and not have thought. I think just the way you do. No, you don't. Have you ever thought why things just tend to happen? They're controlling it. Who do you mean by they? The controllers. They don't allow us to think. We do things and sometimes they don't make sense, but that's okay in our minds because that's just the way things are. They really aren't. We aren't meant to have these lives. 
We are not meant to live on Kornak. We are meant to live on Earth. The man was having trouble getting through to Wilfred, and the frustration was apparent in his face. It wouldn't be much longer, and he only had a brief moment to try and jumpstart the revolution. Wilfred laughed. <laughs> what on Kornak is Earth? The man heavily sighed and winced from his broken arm. Wilfred took a step towards him to help in his pain, but stopped. He stepped back. He then stared blankly at the man. Earth is our home planet, not Kornak. We're not from here. But Kornak is the only planet in the entirety of existence. How else can you explain the stars? Stars are other galaxies and planets. There are hundreds of thousands of planets out there. They told us in primary school that stars are the remnants of destroyed planets. And if we are not from Kornak, then how did we get here? They took us from Earth. They took us and gave us lives. They gave us thought and a way to live. They gave us the idea that we had free will. We never had any to begin with. If there is no free will, how am I willingly talking to you? I can't explain that. I, I, I don't know. Maybe you're starting to think on your own. It begins to override the thought process implanted in our heads. Come on, you, you gotta think. The man started shouting. Time was running out. I do not know what to do, other than think the way I always have. The man tensed up and then relaxed. He stomped his foot on the ground. But how have you always thought? How has your brain always worked? What is your first memory? Do you even remember primary school? How about conditionary school? Well, now that you mention it, I, I can't say I do. You see, think. I don't remember anything other than now and everything that I'm supposed to do. At that moment, things became a blank. The man sitting at Wilford's table let out a single tear. Somewhere, Wilford heard a faint whispering. Wilford heard the sharp whispering and its malicious commands and spiteful words, grab the gun. and it heard it tell grab the man the to grab his gun. Kill yourself. Wilford grab heard the, the whisper grow into a Shoot scream. Yourself in the head. Wilford heard grab the, the scream grow so loud. Grab the, gun. the room was pulsating. Spots were blinding Wilford's vision. The man put the barrel against his temple and pulled the trigger. Somewhere, forget. a voice told Wilford forget. to forget. forget. Wilford stared at the corpse of the man sitting before him at the table. It was a peculiar sight. Now why on Kornak would he do that? Wilford walked back to his room and put on his blue shirt and orange tie. He left his room and left the house through the hole where the front door used to be. It was time to go to work and to be a productive member of society. The moon is gone. All I could see was the sky catching on fire. Our atmosphere burning up and fusing with space. Our time has come, and there was no stopping this. It all started with that story in the news. Planetary movement, they called it. They said it hadn't happened since dinosaurs, and yet no one connected it with how they ended up. They said we'd see miracles, pretty lights, breathtaking things. All I see are these monsters, these giants in the sky. The planet started moving, like a big wind was blowing all of us aside for something else. You would think the planets hitting us would be our fate, but no. That was the moon's luck. Yes, luck. The bigger planets destroying us would have been a glorious fate. But I can see our fate clearly. The sun is now where the moon once hung in the sky, and it's coming closer. This is also a glorious fate. I just fear that it is too late, you see. When the earth began to move and tilt and whirl, the things that resided in the earth's crust and in the deep ocean trenches and deep in the biggest mountains, well, they were not happy to be awoken. Ungodly. That is the adjective I prefer to use. It has not come close to what those things look like. Humans at first glance. And only then, when you look again, you cannot utter a single word. All you can fathom is the thought of who would make such a creature. Not God. Maybe not even Satan. 
much worse than you ever imagined. Eyes as yellow as the now growing sun, no hair, skin like weeks old raw meat left out in the dirtiest sewer, and mangled hands tipped with claws that resemble the blades of a blender. Then you freeze in fear, not because of the image of this abomination, but because of the sound that comes out from this monster's throat. Like the worst guttural scream of agony. Then another one sounds it out, again and again. It's then you realize they understand each other. They're laughing. This is the fate most of the world has been damned to. All but me, I wonder as I sit here alone, watching our galaxy split from the seams like all the people I knew. I don't know which fate I will endure. The sun is almost here. It's getting hot in the closet I have locked myself in. One hole in the wall is how I confirm the world around me is dying. Not to mention the screams of the people and the laughter of those things. But then I hear them break the door to the outside room. And I hear them laugh and scream. Then I almost cry out. They spoke in a very unnerving human voice. It's not the voice that makes me wish the sun was near. But it's what the voice said to me. Come out, Sam. It's not so bad. This is when I pass out. I awake in a jolt. It's dark. For a moment I think they blinded me, but then my eyes adjust to the dark. And I realize I'm still in the closet. I look outside the hole and I'm terrified at what I see. The sun is moving away now. It missed. By the way it looks outside, not by much. All the planets are dried up, not burnt, but dried. I listen for those things, seconds, minutes, hours, maybe even a whole day I sat. Nothing. I build up the courage to go outside and search the school I've hidden. Nothing. I venture further into town and still find nothing. No life resides in this city. I'm alone. I see the blood trails of the creature's meals leading to a small forest outside of town. The sight was strange, accounting on how little life there was left on the once exuberant planet. I hear nothing coming from within, and I'm terrified of dying alone. So eventually I decide to walk in and try to find some other form of life, and follow the deer, I hope, trails. I come upon a clearing. It was strange because of two facts. One, I felt like I was directly in the middle of the forest, going from no sense of direction to perfect. Two, the blood trails just stop. It just disappears. I eventually step into the middle of the clearing. Looking around, I find nothing. I start to fret about being all alone, and watch the earth drift further and further away from any sort of light and other endings when I freeze. I am chilled to the core of my bones. I now know what my fate will be. Sam, you've stopped hiding. We saved our best for you. It's not so bad. I start to run, but... Thank you, Linda. In other news, an 18-year-old boy died after awakening out of a 48-hour coma today. Doctors report that he awoke screaming and for 16 minutes all he could say was, It's not so bad, before going into a cardiac arrest and eventually dying. More on this as it develops. Now moving on to a new subject. Scientists discover a new event they are calling planetary movement. More at 11. Hey guys, The Dark Narrator here, and thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I know I didn't have an end card in the last video, and that's because I'm kind of uh, changing it up. I'm not going to be doing end cards for any of the endings of the series videos, because it doesn't really make sense, because you already know what I'm going to say. Oh, look at this new episode in the series. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it for the regular videos. Um, I've been wanting to bring back creepypasta-related things. I used to do these, uh, and I'm also going to be bringing back something. I said this in one of my other end cards. I don't remember which one. I want to bring back my uh, classic creepypasta stuff, um, which I would go back and narrate something that I never personally narrated, but I know of, and I know it to be a classic, and I've have read it before in the past, just not for a video. So I am planning on doing the Russian sleep experiment for one of the videos. I don't know which one this is going to be. I'm trying to do another true creepy story thing like some type of theme thing like a night shift thing or something because it's been a while since i've actually done one i think it was before christmas before i even did one um so i want to i want to do that first before i 
go into the more creepypasta related stuff. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. All of my links are down below, including the fact that I also put all of where you can find my audio versions of my videos on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, I think Stitcher, Pocket Casts. There's a smidgen of others, but uh, go to Anchor if you want to find all of them. But I did leave the most like prominent ones like Google and Apple and Spotify there. But if you want to find out where they also are, just go to Anchor and you could do that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time for another video. See you later.